Avro Canada, VZ-9 Avrika, was a VTOL aircraft developed by Avro Canada, as part of a secret US military project carried out in the early years, of the Cold War. In flight testing, the Avrika proved to have unresolved thrust and stability problems that limited it to a degraded, low-performance flight envelope. Subsequently, the project was cancelled in September 1961. Avro referred to the efforts as Project Y, with individual vehicles known as Spade and Omega. The Avrika was the ultimate result of a series of Blue Skies research projects by designer Jack Frost, who had joined Avro Canada in June 1947 after working for several British firms. At Avro Canada, he had worked on the Avro CF-100 before creating a research team known as the Special Projects Group. At times, the SPG also operated out of the experimental hangar where it shared space with other esoteric Avro project teams. The resulting design would be tuned for high supersonic performance, have reasonable subsonic performance, and would also offer VTOL, all in a single design. Somewhere along the way, Frost co-opted the tour and rerouted it to the special projects area where he proceeded to show off the Project Y mock-up and models and drawings for a completely circular disc-shaped aircraft known as Project Y2. The USAF agreed to take over funding for Frost's special projects group, and a contract for $750,000 US dollars followed in 1955. In March 1957, the Air Force added additional funding, and the aircraft became Weapons System 606A. A wide variety of designs were studied for a VTOL fighter aircraft, all revolved around the disc shape, leading to the Project 1794 involving a supersonic large disc fighter aircraft. The article went on to describe such an aircraft with diagrams that were clearly influenced by the Avro design. The PV-704 was a stopgap design built into a bunker-like building behind the Avro Experimental Test Facility. To gather flight data on the basic concept while the engine development continued, in 1958 Frost proposed building a smaller proof-of-concept test vehicle he called the Avro car. Initial performance requirements for the Avro car were a 10-minute hover capability in ground effect and 25-mile range with a 1,000 pounds payload. The new plan appeared to make everybody happy, and a $2 million joint services contract managed by the Air Force was awarded to Avro to build and test two Avro cars, which the Army referred to as the VZ-9 AV, the latest in a series of VZ aircraft. Additional Air Force funding of approximately $700,000 was also moved to the Avro car project. The ensuing result was the layoff of almost all Avro Canada employees, including those with the Special Projects Group. The USAF Project Office devoted to the Avro projects, recommended that the WS-606A and all related work be cancelled. The undercarriage of the Avro car was rudimentary with three small castering wheels mounted on stub shafts. A set of skids was substituted later in testing although they were not normally fitted. Until control problems were completely solved, the Avro test pilots acquired a touch for the extremely sensitive control inputs and Avro aircraft chief development test pilot Pototsky was eventually able to demonstrate a hands-off flight. Avro test pilot Peter Cope, USAF project pilot Walter J. Hodgson and NASA's Ames Research Center chief test pilot Fred J. Drinkwater III, who all flew the Avro car, considered it still a tricky vehicle to fly. From 9 June to the 7th of October 1959, it was tested in a static hover rig. The first of Rikar at Ames was similarly modified, and, in April 1960, it was tested in their 40 feet 80 feet wind tunnel. Frost's team considered two new designs, one with a large vertical tail and one with a wing with tip-mounted verticals, winglets. Both designs used two 2700 lbf thrust General Electric J85 turbojets and increased the turborotor diameter from 5 to 6 foot. Frost's proposals for a modified design were not accepted, and the Avrika and related WS-606A supersonic VTOL programs were officially cancelled in December 1961 by the US military. Avro company executives encouraged additional VTOL research projects exploring new configurations married to a disc platform and even a lift jet version, but no further interest resulted from Canadian or other sources, to cap the end of this special projects group program. 
In 1961, a number of later proposals, including the Avro P470V tall fiber concept derived from the Special Projects Group, were submitted to fulfill a NATO competition for a tactical strike fighter. The second of Rikar had logged about 75 flight hours at the end of the flight testing. Judged by its performance, the Avrikar was an abject failure, it could not lift itself safely more than a few feet off the ground, and its bulbous design limiting high-speed performance accompanied by unbearable heat and screaming exhaust noise, made it impractical for the military. Company designer John Frost applied for a number of patents in Canada, the UK and the US that established the pivotal role that the Avrikar and related Avro experimental vehicles made in the VTOL world. The Avro VZ9 of Rikai was a dead-end in VTOL design, according to Russell Lee, curator at the National Air and Space Museum, yet its technological innovations have intrigued other designers. After successful tether tests, the saucer designs also at one time publicized as disco jet were abandoned and their latest project, the Molly Sky Car, has a flying car appearance. SN 59 4975, utilized for flight testing, returned to Canada briefly for display in Montreal at the Man and His World exhibition. After a lengthy period of outdoor display, it is now under restoration at the U.S. Army Transportation Museum in Fort Eustis, Virginia.